Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at this book here, which is from the Financial Remedies Handbook. It's now in the 13th edition. It comes to us from uh, LexisNexis Family Law. It's been written by a retired district judge, Roger Bird, and a current district judge, Sophie Harrison. Uh, it's an excellent book and one that I'm delighted to be able to review at a particular turning point for um, what was the old ancillary relief, now financial remedies, uh, available in family proceedings. <clears throat> I've given the title of our review, The New Edition on Financial Remedies in Family Law Cases Arrives at an Important Junction for Proceedings in the 2020s, and that's exactly, I think, where we are. Let's have a look at the book first of all. There it is. It's a paperback, front, then the spine, and then the back. You probably can't see the reversed out stuff on the back but never mind the index is by paragraph numbering at the back it's a detailed index so you should be able to find what you're looking for quite easily there if we go to the front of the book there's the front page there there's a, a reminder that every care has been taken to give accurate information um, but uh, obviously there's a sort of liability denial statement from the authors then we've got um, <clears throat> the forward to the first edition, which was written by um, Lord Justice Thorpe. And then the preface to the 13th edition has been written by Roger. And I've taken a little bit of that for the review. Then we've got the contents section running all the way through. Um, it's quite a substantial amount of content. And then we get to, just get there at the moment, to... Uh, the last chapter, which is chapter 24, called Summing Up. Then you've got an, uh, um, an appendix, which is actually the legislation. The appendix actually takes up quite a large proportion of the book, because it starts around about 320-odd. Yes, there. So you can see, in terms of the size of the book, the appendix is actually quite substantial. You've then got a very useful list of abbreviations all of which are very helpful. <clears throat> then you've got the table of statutes, all the usual suspects, and then you've got uh, after statutes, statutory instruments. Then you've got after that uh, some European material. There's always going to be a little bit of a European link. Then the table of cases. Then after that, a lot of cases of course, we then get to the body copy of the actual work. In chapter one, introduction, and you can see this, the house style for LexisNexis, paragraph numbering, and um, there isn't in fact any footnoting in this particular uh, book, but it runs through, and it runs, as I say, all the way through, and it's a, an important book which you need if you are um, in practice at the family law bar, or in fact as a solicitor involved in these um, sorts of proceedings. <clears throat> so what do I say about the book? Well, when the first edition of Financial Remedies Handbook came out from Le uh, LexisNexis, it came out in 1998, and Lord Justice Thorpe then wrote in the foreword, talking about what I and others would know in those days as ancillary relief to financial proceedings in the family courts. Um, and it stated this um, <coughs> actual forward with confidence that significant changes in law and practice are imminent. Fast forward, of course, to 2022, and practitioners will see a new landscape which is now evolving and emerging after the COVID-19 pandemic. And we call, of course, such relief financial remedies today. So it's all change again. Um, and I refer to ancillary relief because obviously some people will get a bit confused. But of course that then leads into what's happening at the moment. We welcome the new 13th edition from <coughs> Roger Bird and uh, Sophie Harrison. What I suggest you do is do read the preface which states that over the last year the lives of everyone um, have been overshadowed by coronavirus. Family laws have not escaped uh, these misfortunes. Indeed, like myself and my family, no nobody has uh, escaped unscathed and none of us need reminding of the difficulties that have been involved in interviewing clients and dealing with other parties whilst working from home. 
um, still less, say the authors, of presenting a case to the court by way of the cloud video platform of the CVP, which takes a certain technique. It's different, and I have to say it's not as good. It's as simple as that. It's just simply not as good because it's more difficult to try to gauge what is happening when you've actually got the person on the screen telling lies rather than seeing them in front of you telling lies. And that's why I think it's quite important to have attended parties hearings. This statement, of course, which I've just read out about the problems, um, neatly sums up why this book is so important for 2022 onwards as the courts begin to open up again, we hope. Uh, as I write this in the autumn of uh, 2021, we will see what happens. Now, the authors comment that the <clears throat> burden on judges and the courts has been equally exacting. They are both, of course, judges, the two uh, authors. Um, so one can only hope that some degree of normality will return in the foreseeable future. And of course, for this reason alone, the handbook is a priority purchase, I think, now, because of what is, what is actually taking place. Because what we're getting here is useful updates from the higher courts who have produced their usual series of interesting points, as the authors put it, which makes law such a terrific area to practice in. It's one of the reasons why I've always been fascinated by it. And of course, we've got the Financial Remedies Court, which has been introduced. It's now established effectively. But there's a word of caution. Bird comments that, quote, government initiatives have been noted by their absence, which is not surprising given the pandemic and the parliamentary paralysis caused by Brexit. A nice bit of blame coming in here, of course. The Domestic Abuse Act, he refers to it as a bill, of course, is now on the statute book. So we will see how much effect it has on, on all aspects of what we do in the family courts. I'm not quite sure where we're going at the moment with that part of it, because, as I say, Parliament is just coming back for the autumn. Uh, session and we shall see what happens next. Now in the book itself there are 24 chapters, about 500 odd pages, and there's the substantial appendix of the legislation starting from page 327, so it's, it's actually about a third of the book. There's also a most useful index I found right at the back of the book which uses paragraph numbering rather than page numbering, and of course the Financial Remedies Handbook remains, to me anyway, a, f a fundamental purchase for the family practitioner, which is made even more of a priority today with the new court system we have to grapple with once it takes off. Now, thanks are due to the excellent work here of uh, both Roger Bird and uh, Sophie Harrison uh, putting the new edition together at a difficult time. So well done during what is, a, I would say, a twilight period of the pandemic. Must have been very difficult. Um, the new 13th edition of the paperback was published on the 21st of July 2021 and law is as stated on the 1st of May 2021. There's the book again and then there's the spine and then the back. And as I say the actual preface to the 13th edition, well, I've lifted a little bit of what Roger said uh, but I think it's useful. Let's just, oh here we go, opening, this is chapter 16 on procedure. Quite important because I think there are going to be some procedural changes taking place. This is the FPR um, <clears throat> 2010 Part 9 and there are various other changes which are covered, um, obviously, as you run through. I'm just opening it at that page just to show you and uh, give you an idea of what the book is. But I'm grateful to Lexis, Nexis and Family Law for continuing to publish these books because they make our lives so much easier as practitioners. So a big thank you to everybody. Bye bye.